if if non monogamy is the an ethical non monogamy is the umbrella then your relationship is under which category of the subcultures so my husband and i have been swingers okay okay and um yeah i guess maybe can you describe a little bit more what that what that entails and what that looks like as far yeah. as like a a day to day like i guess people um cuz i know a couple of people that are polyamorous but i don't really understand the the communication or organization that I can imagine goes into one of these more alternative lifestyles. Cause you know, communication is super important for any relationship, romantic friendship, familiar exam, et cetera. And so I can imagine it's even doubly important mm -hmm. when you try to navigate people's feelings and emotions going through this. Absolutely. And communication is the one thing that every single couple says, and, you know, just increases tenfold when they begin non-monogamy. And it's one of the reasons that people end up feeling closer. A lot of couples will report, re report feeling closer with their primary relationship. Um, I, I think very much because of that reason, because of the communication has to go up so much. Hmm. Um, but how that looks like for us day to day is we go out with couples. We don't, I mean, could I say just to add some complexity to the description, there are single people in the lifestyle as well. Um, but I'm just going to talk about more typically. Um, we go out with other couples and, you know, basically create friendships and we're usually sexually active with them. Now you don't have sex with every couple you meet by any means. And so that's why you can kind of think of it as dating. Um, but also we're not, none of us are in it for a romantic relationship. So it just stays at a casual sex and friendship level. Right. And have you seen a lot of these or some of these relationships end up turning romantic or you know, because I think some people might argue that once there is that intimacy there and if there's that attraction, then that's easy for it to lead to something that maybe is more romantic and potentially fracturing that main relationship. Yeah. And that's the fear. That's the that is the probably the biggest fear for everybody when they're coming into non monogamy for people who hear about non monogamy. But I have a couple of things to that. One is I think that we have been misled in this monogamous world to feel that, like you said at the beginning of this, we found this person and now I'm safe. <laughs> because mm. a lot of people get left and divorced in monogamy as well. It's just that it's not a fear that's on the forefront for us. And I would say in non-monogamy, of course, that does bring up more insecurity because we're constantly meeting other people. Does it ever happen? Yes. Is it the norm? No. And um, like I said, most couples that I know, well, you know, generally in the community, I'm both a coach and have a lot, you know, have friends in the lifestyle is that it actually brings that primary relationship closer together and you have even more appreciation for your partner. Right. I guess what, what is like one core trait that you would need, or I guess a couple of characters, someone would need to practice non-monogamy because I, I think I am, some of my friends have, and I have discussed, would you ever do this? And in, in, in a relationship and some have been like, I think about it. And, and I, I I'm around the lines of like, I think about it, I guess it matters who my partner is and how strong my relationship is, et cetera. Um, but I guess maybe from my, my upbringing and, and relationships I've seen monogamy always just seems like a good idea for me. And I, I think maybe mm -hmm. I'd be a little bit too, um, what's the word? Yeah, like more more anxious, I think, knowing that like my partner is going with someone else, uh, et cetera. But I, I think you're right. It probably does depend on the on the relationship. So what have you seen? What characteristics are, you know, more important for people that want to try this sort of lifestyle? Well, here's the most important one, and you're already demonstrating it, which is self-awareness. So the being able to check in with yourself and have that internal dialogue of like, is this something I want? Or do I think I have the traits that allow this to happen? That is the kind of dialogue you're having all the time in non-monogamy because you're setting up agreements and boundaries with your partner. You're establishing um, kind of what 
and those boundaries and agreements are to keep you feel safe. Well, what makes you feel safe? You need to be able to check in with yourself and say, well, here's what I need to feel safe. Um, and also what do I want and what do I want to do? So one of the unhealthy characteristics of relationship that will get highlighted very quickly in non-monogamy is any kind of codependence. Like I'm going to do something for you because you want to do this. And that's typically not going to go in a healthy direction. So very quickly people will get in touch with like, what do I want? And then that's the conversation. If you want different things, those are, you know, where you have negotiations and things, but you're not just going along with things because that's what your partner wants. Right. That's those conversations sound exhausting. Like, I, I, I mean, it, yeah, just it's like, I mean, to have, be having them all the time. That's what some people, some have told me that like, you're, you're constantly reassessing how you feel, how the relationship is. And maybe I need to draw the line of an ideal, an idealized monogamous relationship. You know, that communication is also important regardless. Um, so so I, I don't know. It, it just seems like there's an added level of emotional awareness and conversation to be had. And it just seemed like it was just it's so much more. Um, I would argue that it is in the beginning, definitely more. It gets easier, of course, the more you're doing it with anything with practice. And I'm also going to argue that most monogamous relationships could benefit from upping their communication as well. And yeah. I think that, I, kinda, especially... I, I was gonna say, I kind of convinced myself that in the middle of that, <laughs> of my question of like, you know what, most people in monogamous relationships probably aren't communicating enough as it, as it is. <laughs> 